Yes, welcome back. Today I got a build for you. A whole guide for Barton that turns him into a tiny little bullet. It's like that crazy bullet bill in Mario Kart that just kills everything. Except it kills nothing, it just moves really fast. The only item you need for this build is the 5% increased movement speed from your trinket slot. Nothing else matters, it's just to get him going as fast as possible. In your builds here, see it coming is a must have, dodging an extra 20% is huge in 1.05. That is massive. You can just turn your back after running for a little while in a crowd, block, and dash for days. Stunty Savior is just a straight bonus. You get 15% increased movement speed when you're the last man standing. This is a solo build. Your bots should be dead instantaneously, even if you can't put them there. Adrenaline Surge is amazing. On max stacks, Trophy Enter grants a reduced cooldown for leap. Now, in this case, that might be a little bit hard to get if you're not killing anybody and you're just sprinting through a map, except check this out. His charge attack is a double hit. And then, of course, you have your regular left click. So in almost an instant, you can get all three hits in and immediately get your full stacks. Now this is amazing because you get no escape. After leaping, Barton gains a 25% increased movement speed. Now between the 5% of your trinket, the 15% from Stunty Savior, and the 25% there, you are moving at an increased speed of 45%. And that is insane and incredibly easy to maintain. Just drive by on every little chaos warrior you see, and you should have no problem having ults for days. Now, I'm going to let this clip play. This is running at regular speed. We beat against the grain on Legend in my first attempt. Now, if you run into a Bile Troll or a Storm Fiend, this isn't going to work because they'll block your path and you'll have to kill them. Now, being that you're alone without a ranged weapon and against an entire map's worth of enemies, it's just not going to fly realistically to murder a boss on your own as a Slayer Barden. Now, the other big bonuses you can get here is you get your 45% movement speed, and your allies are going to be dragging back the first few enemies at the start of the match. Now, I would normally suggest killing them for the increased movement speed, but as you are a slayer, you are going to be completely unable to kill your allies. You just don't have a ranged weapon, it's not possible. And with the new nerfs to ranged damage anyway, it would take you a year and a half even if you had a gun. So here we see the first leap. That's an increase in 25%, plus we have the 5% from the item. That's going to put us up to 30% increased movement speed. We still have the extra 15 we'd get if our team was dead. Doesn't really matter. You can see me getting a few shots in here. The ult is just burning up immediately. If you get your hands in a concentration potion, this is free nigh infinite leaps. Uh, I was playing around with this build a little bit after, and I found that it's got a hell of a lot to it. Uh, you can very, very easily take a tome and a grim in this run. I like to take this tome on the first roof. I've already lost two thirds of my team. Unfortunately for me, Sienna is automatically teleporting to me and therefore not dying for the extra speed. But even just with that extra five and my leap speed, I outpace most enemies. Now, of course, we're getting the massive amounts of leaps because of the concentration potion here, and you can burn away ahead of the enemy crowd. Now, the thing that I have noticed about this is while you are running around and getting all this extra distance off the enemies behind you, you'll normally only... Oh, there's the bug. It hit a ramp and slid all the way up and forced my camera to the ground. Uh, I like to take a bomb with me. The idea behind this is that you'll normally get, and there he is right now, a singular grabbing enemy if you're soloing and getting this far ahead of the enemies. Now, you can raise your allies to use as fodder to distract the enemies, but you're getting that extra 15% movement speed, so there's almost no reason. Uh, here I was just trying to get my ult back up again. And with the extra 15% and the 5 on your item, that 20% movement speed, you're faster than all regular enemies automatically. Now with the extra 25% from your leap, you can outpace every enemy in the game. And I literally mean every enemy in the game. I think here in a second we'll be opening the barn door when I come around, and I'm fairly certain we got a spawn of chaos in this run. And the spawn of chaos is the fastest enemy in the game, it's the fastest boss, it's the fastest regular spawn. The bonuses behind this, of course, is that he's constantly swinging at your back, meaning that any enemy that is getting up behind you is getting knocked away. Now, you can't plan for a specific boss. Again, if you get either the Storm Fiend or the Bile Troll, there's not much you can do. Right here, you can take a jaunt around and pick up the first Grim if you'd like, but you can just jump over the boss as you open the door. You'll be at maximum movement speed. The Spawn of Chaos cannot catch you. While it does technically move a little bit faster than you do, as soon as it is within range to start attacking, it stops and starts animation. Because of the increased movement speed of this build, it doesn't matter that it's stopped to start that animation, it's never going to reach you. If it can attack while running, obviously, but that would be a little OP. So 
running through this field, I cannot even hear the spawn of chaos on our heels. There it is back there at the bottom of the hill. I thought I'd be cheeky and try and go for the Sakrat, but remember, if you're doing this build and you go for Barton's Charge Attack, it does slow you down. So, start your charge next to the opponent you wish to hit to get the Insta-3 hit off. Firing it too early will actually slow you down, and much as I've shown throughout this run, bring you outside of melee range, which is not a thing you want when you are clutch trying to get your ult back up with the Spawn of Chaos in your back. Now, if you're running against the grain like I did, be very careful in this spot right here. If you're too far ahead of the enemies chasing you, they will climb up back there and cut you off in front of the barn. So you want to try and make sure that they're still behind you. For most enemy, or for the spot of chaos, he's, he's going to be on your tail. He's fast, if not as fast as you are. If you're dealing with something like a storm fiend, it can kind of be a pain in the ass sometimes because he will get too far behind and end up ahead of you. And then now, Stormfiend is a really, really easy enemy to dodge. So if he pops up in front of you, just maybe try and save a leap for when you leave this area. I normally do, so I can leap from right here, way down here, and I make sure that no enemies that are coming up, like those Skaven War on my left, or on my right there, we're not going to get in the way. And normally any enemies that have been kind of hanging out behind at this point in the map have closed that gap a little bit and you won't have to worry about them ending up above you in this barn. Uh, in this case, the Spawn of Chaos has got a lot to climb. He may even be stuck. This happens. And the more regular spawns and specials that are on the map, the less you'll run into. This is why, as I said, you normally run into a singular grabbing enemy. In this case, I ran into a leech. I hit him with the bomb. If any more have spawned, they're never going to make it up to me. I just don't normally see them in the time frame of the map. And we burned through this map in like six minutes. So there you go, guys. That was my Barden Slayer solo legend guide. I hope that helped you out. I hope it all works out for you guys in the future and you get some kick-ass builds of your own. This is not a thing that requires an incredible amount of skill to pull off once you have the build. You just have to get to use to the idea of keeping just outside of the range of your enemies, occasionally blocking and turning around to make sure you know where they are and to get that extra dodge range out of there. But the long and the short is, anybody can do this to get themselves into a little bit of legend loot. And if you want to mix it up and try and grab that extra tome or grim, you often come out with a merchant's or a soldier's vault, which already puts you far and above and beyond anyone who is completing full pulls on champion. And this is just a casual little solo thing you can do in your downtime. Anyway, guys, I hope that helped you out. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to give us a sub. See you guys next time. Bye.